I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your yarn shop no matter where you live. Welcome back to the Editee Knit Along. We're almost finished. In this episode, I'll show you how to bind off, work the sleeves, and block your sweater for a beautiful finish. Let's get started. So now you have finished your body shaping and the end of your body. I want to go ahead and go through all of the points that we've gone through on the sweater. We have cast on, we've knit the neck band, we've done our lace pattern, we've done our short row shaping for the back, we have gone through and divided for our sleeves and finished our body. Now we're ready to do the band of garter stitch around the edge before we bind off. To do that, it's a simple purl and knit. So we have one row of purl, one row of knit. We repeat that again. Let's go ahead and show you on this little sample that I have here. Garter stitch has a purl on one side and a knit row on the other side. So because we are knitting in the round, we need to do one round of purl, one round of knit to get the garter stitch. If you were knitting flat, then you would knit every row. So now we're at the point where we're ready to bind off. We've gone ahead and knit our body, knit the band around the end, double check to make sure the length is where we like it. What I'm gonna do is I'm in the starting position. To bind off, I'm going to bind off in stockinette. So that means I'm gonna knit one stitch, knit two stitch, then I'm gonna pass the first stitch up and over the second stitch knit the next stitch. You kind of want to keep this a little loose. This is going to be the edge of your sweater. This is going to slip over your body and lie right around your hip area. So I don't want to strangle this yarn. I don't want to go super tight. I want to make sure that I keep it really loose. It helps when it has these little nubs on there because sometimes they'll get caught and help hold that stitch a little bit bigger. Go ahead and use that to your advantage when you're using this. So let's take a look at what we've done here. You want it about this loose. We don't want it too tight. I'm down to my last couple of stitches. Now we're gonna finish this bind off. Make sure to go pretty loosely here. Now when you get down to the last stitch, you can go ahead and leave a tail so you have something to weave in. Clip that thread. We're going to slide this yarn here, the tail, through the last loop and pull tight to close that up. And now we have this nice little bound off edge. You can go ahead and weave in your end. So I like to use this tapestry needle. It has a bent tip and a big eye, so it makes it easy to slide the yarn through so I can weave these ends. Also too, when I'm weaving in the ends, I like to go ahead and kind of close up this little gap here. Because I was knitting in the round, when I closed out that last stitch, it kind of pokes out a little bit. So my first stitch to weave in this end is gonna be the next stitch over, and I like to get a little bit of room there so that I don't pull that stitch. I slide it in and it kind of closes it up. If you do get a gap or something like that on the back side, you want to come in and grab the stitch, the, the purl bump of the stitch before and the purl bump of the stitch after and slide that in and close that up. Just like that. Now what we're gonna do is go to the inside of our sleeve. We're gonna look up here at where the stockinette area is. Slide under and back. I'm just kind of weaving through those stitches, making sure I get everything locked in. Because this yarn has these nubby ends on it, they kind of stick and hold the yarn there, so that kind of helps secure your weave in. I like to weave in about six to eight inches of extra yarn. That way I have enough to repair something later on if I need to. 
Once you're done, you just wanna go ahead and clip your yarn and you're good to go. Now we're gonna go on to the sleeves. Now we're ready to start the sleeve. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the finished sweater and then I'll show you how to do it on my sample. So when you go to start the sleeve, you have all of the active stitches hanging out on some waist yarn. You're gonna take those active stitches and slide them back onto your needles. Then you will take your working yarn and pick up right here in the center of the armpit. You will pick up the cast on stitches and then start to knit all the way around. There'll be a little bit of gap here. Once you get to this end, you'll pick up those stitches, place your beginning of the round stitch marker, and then you'll be ready to finish up the garter ridge to bind off and finish your sleeve. So on my little sample here, let me show you how that's worked. Now keep in mind, here's of course is gonna be a lot bigger. I'm just using this so I can show you the techniques and the skills that you'll need to do this. So I have my active stitches on my waist yarn. With your smaller size needles, we're going to pick up our active stitches along the sleeve. So I pulled the yarn out a little bit, the waist yarn, and just slide right through. I usually like to do a few stitches at a time and then pull the yarn out. If for some chance you lose your stitch or it goes down into your fabric, you can tug on your waist yarn and it'll pull that stitch up so you can see it. Just slide right through there. See like this one is starting to go down. I can pull this yarn up and it brings that stitch up a little bit more. Now see, I've kind of lost this last stitch. It's tucked in under this. Just take your waist yarn and pull it up so that you can get a good grasp on that. And then you can just pull your waist yarn out. So now I have all of those active stitches back on my needles. Now that we've picked up all of our stitches, we're ready to pick up and knit our first foundation round of the sleeve. Because we're gonna be using Magic Loop for this section, and you probably will too, because at this point, you're using your smaller needles, and you can use a 16 or 32 inch cord. I would suggest using the 32 inch cord and using Magic Loop for this. Or if you have a set of double pointed needles that are in the size that you need, then go ahead and use those as well. Whatever you're comfortable with, but for me, with what I have, I'm gonna use the Magic Loop. Since I have all of these active stitches on my cable at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and divide my stitches in half and go ahead and move my cord out just a little bit at this point. So I have room to maneuver as I pick up my stitches. We're gonna be picking up in the armpit area down here. These are the stitches that we cast on after we had divided for our sleeves and when we began to start knitting in the round, we cast on those stitches. Now we're going to pick those up to close up this gap right here. So I'm gonna slide under the two legs of the stitch here in the middle and I'm gonna join my new yarn here. To do that, I make a loop over my finger, I slide it on my needle, bring it in, and now I have a new stitch on my needle. I'm gonna do that all the way across, going through the two legs of the cast on stitch. Now you'll have more, because I'm just using this tiny sample, but you'll do that halfway through. Here we go, so I've just got a few here. Now I am ready to start knitting the active stitches that I had slid over from my waist yarn. So let me get my needles into position, make this a little bit easier here. I am knitting the foundation round that will set me up for the garter ridge. So we're just gonna go ahead and knit all the way around until I get to the other gap for the other side of the armpit area. So I'm gonna reset my needles, so I'm halfway through on my little sleeve here. Bring this around. Knit until I get to the end of these stitches. 
So sometimes you might come across a stitch that looks like this, where it's a little twisted. You can go ahead and slide that off. You want your stitch to look where in the back, the back leg of your stitch is on your left side and the front leg is on your right side. See that, if you see one that's twisted, it could be twisted that way or it could be twisted, let me flip it around the other way so you can see what it looks like the other way. So it could look like this, where's a big open, or it should have a little twist there. But what you want is you want the back leg to be on your left side and the front leg to be on your right side. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue knitting. But you can just slide it off onto your other needle, untwist it and keep going. Okay, I am back to the gap of the other side of my sleeve. I'm gonna tuck my yarn down inside my sweater here. This is the tail of where, of the yarn from where I picked it up to start knitting. So I've got a couple of stitches here that I wanna pick up and knit into. We're gonna slide under the leg right there, like that. Slide under those, wrap our yarn around, bring it out. And I've got one more here. Slide under those two, wrap around, and bring it out. Okay, so here is now we are set up to start our garter ridge. This is the same as the band that we did on the bottom of our sweater. You purl one round, knit one round, repeat that again, bind off, and you finished your sleeve. Don't forget to weave in your ends. Now we're ready to block our sweater. What we're gonna do is get some water that's about room temperature and you can add a little bit of wool wash or whatever you prefer using to wash your finer items. We'll go ahead and place the sweater in our bowl of water. Now the reason why we are blocking this sweater is because we want all of our stitches to relax and kind of just enjoy this bath. But when you do that, your stitches kind of even out and find their own place in the garment. Go in here and kind of squeeze out some of the air, kind of like you're giving it a massage and a bath at the same time. Some yarns, I'm not seeing it with this one, but some yarns, while you do this process, will release a little bit of their color. That's fine, it's normal. Don't be surprised if you do see your water change colors a little bit. Okay, we're gonna let that soak there for just a moment. I'm gonna get my towel out. So normally you're gonna let this soak for about 30 minutes. It gives the time for the water to absorb inside the fibers. Relax those stitches so they lay out nice and pretty. But we're gonna go ahead and pull this out now and we're going to squeeze out the water. A lot of times you don't want to wring your garments when you're pulling it out of the water because that will distort your fabric. So it's kind of just squeeze. I don't want to do that wringing motion. Get as much water out of it as you can at this stage. All right. Now, now at this point, we want to roll up our towel. Pretty tight. What this does is it allows you to wick out some of the extra water that's built up in your sweater without distorting the stitches. Now we're gonna pull this out of here. Ooh, feels good. Okay. So you can tell the towel took a lot of water. Now we are going to lay out the sweater and we're gonna pin it and block it so we can make sure that it dries in the right size that we need. I am using a Knitter's Pride Mindful Blocking Mat. It's foam and they go together like puzzle pieces so you can make it the size that you need for the project that you're blocking. So we kinda of just lay it out here. I'm gonna start at the top of the sweater. I'm using these really cool blocking pins. These are Knitter's Pride, also from the Mindful Collection. So I'm gonna kinda set this up. I'm putting a few pins in first, then I'll get out my measuring tape and measure and see if I need to adjust any of it. 
If you've ever pinned a shawl before, you go out and you pin all the little points and all the little edges. You don't have to be that precise with this project. We just want to keep our edges straight and make sure that our sweater is at the dimensions that the pattern calls for. So I'm gonna take my measuring tape and we're gonna take a few measurements to see how we're looking and where we need to pull and adjust. So from the pattern we have the yoke measurement is nine inches. So it goes from here to here, which is right where the underarm is. And then from there down is 12 inches. So this is my waist, which is 21. So I stretched it out a little bit too much here. Let's go ahead and take these out. Let's fuss with it a little bit here. I know I have the right length this way, but I need to get a little bit more up here. So I'm just gonna move this around with my hands, manipulate it, get it to where it needs to be the size so it'll fit me right when it's dry. Let's go back, put this here and pen it. You can be as fussy as you wanna be with this part because just remember when you stretch it one way, it changes the measurement of another way. So take your time and get it where you want it so that when you go to wear it, it fits your body right. So it looks like we are right on target. Voila. Once your sweater dries, it's ready to wear. If you're knitting along, we'd love to see pictures. Please share on social media leave a comment or send us an email. Remember, you can watch these videos anytime if you need help. We have lots more knit alongs planned. Be sure to like and subscribe and you won't miss a stitch. Happy knitting.